So you've probably wondered at some point, could dragons actually exist? I mean, not in fairy tales or fantasy novels, but in real life. Giant, fire-breathing reptiles with wings. Could something like that actually evolve? Could it live among us? Well, today we're going to explore that exact question. We'll dig into biology, evolution, physics, animal anatomy, and even chemistry to try and answer once and for all, could dragons be real? Now, no magic, that's the rule. We're not talking about dragons that exist because a wizard waved a wand. This is a science-based exploration of whether real-world laws of nature could ever allow something like a dragon to evolve. So, let's start from the basics. First of all, what do we mean when we say dragon? Because there are a lot of different versions out there. Some dragons are giant and have four legs. Some are smaller and only have two. Some breathe fire, others breathe ice, lightning, or even acid. But for our purposes, we'll focus on the classic Western dragon, the kind you see in medieval art or fantasy series. Here's our checklist. Large, reptile-like creature. Four legs, two wings, and it breathes fire. It sounds simple enough, but already, we're dealing with a creature that breaks several rules of biology. We'll get to that. For now, let's go through the list and see which of these features could or couldn't exist in nature. Let's start with size. Dragons are big, like really big. Think of Drogon from Game of Thrones. By the end of the series, he's the size of a small airplane or Smog from The Hobbit. That dragon's over 100 meters long in the movie. So... Could something that big even exist? Well, yes. Dinosaurs were enormous. Some of the biggest were over 30 meters long. Creatures like the Argentinosaurus or the Supersaurus. So yes, the Earth has supported creatures that large before. That part is totally plausible. And they weren't just long, some of them were heavy, 50 tons or more. So the idea of a giant, heavy reptilian creature roaming around isn't far-fetched at all. But there's a catch. Most of those huge dinosaurs were herbivores. Big, slow, and not exactly fearsome predators. So if our dragon is meant to be a fast, agile hunter, that adds some challenges. Big predators did exist, like the T-Rex. It was around 12 meters long and weighed up to 10 tons. That's definitely big, though not dragon big. But a dragon that size? That would already be terrifying enough, right? Now, how could a real animal breathe fire? Let's look at nature for inspiration. Some animals can actually create chemical reactions inside their bodies. The best example? The bombardier beetle. It mixes chemicals in its abdomen to create a boiling, explosive spray it shoots at predators. It's basically got a built-in chemical weapon. Then there's methane. Methane is flammable? And guess what? Animals produce methane, especially cows. When they digest plant matter, microbes in their stomachs release methane. That gas comes out one end or the other. In fact, you can light it. Don't try this at home. So imagine a creature that stores methane, or some other flammable gas, in a special chamber, then expels it and ignites it and with a spark. And here's a strange fact. In extreme cases, cows have been known to release so much methane that it becomes a hazard. There have even been cases of methane buildup in barns causing explosions. That's right, barn fires started by cow burps. Real fire cows. Now, what about ignition? Enter the electric eel. It generates voltage up to 860 volts. That's more than enough to create a spark. Now combine this with a methane release at the right moment. Boom. A creature could, in theory, create fire from its mouth. It's unlikely, but not physically impossible. Nature's already halfway there with some animals. So now we have three ingredients. A body large enough to hold the organs and chambers needed, the ability to produce flammable gas, and some way to ignite it. Imagine a creature that's evolved in a unique environment. Maybe it lives underground and needs to deter predators. Maybe it's developed highly specialized bacteria in its digestive system that maximize methane production. Maybe it evolved a structure in its mouth with conductive plates that trigger a spark when muscles contract. 
You might even imagine evolution leading to different fire mechanisms. Maybe some dragons have two separate nozzles in the mouth, one for gas and one for ignition. Or maybe they have something like grinding teeth that cause friction sparks. This would take an incredible set of evolutionary coincidences, but it's within the realm of imagination. Now, for the hardest part, flight. Birds can fly, bats can fly, some dinosaurs could fly, but those animals are small and light, with massive wings relative to their body size. They also have hollow bones. For an animal the size of a dragon to fly, its wings would need to be massive, tens of meters long, and its body would need to be incredibly light. Think like a zeppelin, with wings. Let's talk numbers. Most birds need about one square meter of wing surface for every 10 kilograms of body mass to stay airborne. That means a 500 kilogram dragon would need 50 square meters of wing surface. That's a wingspan of 20 to 30 meters once at least. Even large flying creatures from the past like Quetzalcoatlus, a pterosaur with a 12 meter wingspan, only weighed about 250 kilograms. Our hypothetical dragon, it would weigh several tons. And we haven't even discussed muscle power. The power needed to flap such wings would require enormous chest muscles, bigger than anything we see in birds today. The body would have to be totally restructured just to accommodate them. But let's talk limbs. All vertebrates have four limbs. That's a biological rule. Bats use their front limbs as wings. Birds, too. So if a dragon has four legs and wings, that makes six limbs. And no vertebrate has ever had six limbs. Not a single one. Which means if dragons evolved like other animals, their wings would be their front limbs. That's how it works for bats and pterosaurs. So, dragons with four legs and wings? Sorry, that's pure fantasy. But if we wanted to design a biologically plausible dragon, here's what it might look like. Two hind legs, two massive front wings, like a bat or pterosaur. Large, but, but relatively light. Maybe 200 to 300 kilograms. Hollow bones, special organs to store and ignite methane. It might not be smoke sized but it could be big scary, and breathe fire. And maybe it wouldn't fly the way birds do. Maybe it would glide like a, like a flying squirrel, using thermals and air currents. That would reduce the energy cost of flight and make it more plausible. Alternatively, let's entertain one wild theory. What if dragons don't fly with wings at all? There's a fun idea from a fantasy film called The Flight of Dragons. It suggests dragons generate helium in their bellies from digesting limestone. That helium lifts them like balloons. The wings? They're just for steering. When they want to descend, they release gas, which ignites from a spark. Boom, fire breath. Let's break this down. Is it possible for an animal to create helium? Helium is an inert element. It can't be synthesized by biological organisms. But what about hydrogen? Hydrogen is flammable and much lighter than air. Could an animal produce hydrogen? Surprisingly, yes, certain bacteria can. If a creature had a symbiotic relationship with hydrogen-producing microbes, it could potentially fill a chamber in its body with hydrogen. That would help with lift. It's far-fetched, sure, but not as far as it sounds. You'd basically end up with a biological blimp. Weird? Absolutely. Impossible? Not quite. So, could dragons exist? Not the way you usually imagine them. Not smog. Not Drogon. Not with four legs and wings and the ability to carry off a cow. But something dragonish? Something that's got wings instead of arms. Breathes fire thanks to a cool combo of methane and electric sparks. And maybe even glides or floats? That's not entirely off the table. Evolution could theoretically go that way. It didn't, but it could have. And that's enough to keep the dream alive. Thanks for watching. If you want more videos like this one, subscribe, hit that like button, and I'll see you next time.